Okay, so I've promised that I would make a video on my journey to become an amateur astrophotographer, and tonight we're finally going to do that. For those of you that don't know, I picked up a new hobby, and that hobby requires you to basically never sleep again. So if you've been wondering why I've been tired, it's because I've been doing a lot of astrophotography. Anytime we get a clear night, I'm staying up until like 5 a.m. photographing nebula and galaxies and just learning as much as I possibly can about this in a short amount of time. I've been doing this for about three weeks now and I've only had uh, maybe about 10 good nights to be able to photograph stuff. And we've gotten a couple decent photos, but tonight we're gonna try and photograph the Elephant's Trunk Nebula. Now we're gonna try and do this in one night. Now we are shooting in narrowband, which means we need to take three times the amount of exposures if you were shooting with a color like CMOS camera or something like that. So we are using a monochrome CCD camera and we're shooting an H-alpha, oxygen three and sulfur three, which we then combine into an RGB image, which means in one night, it's not gonna be very high quality. If we wanted a high quality image of the Elephant's Trunk Nebula, this would take three, maybe even a week, two weeks to really be able to do, depending on weather. You want around like 20 plus hours to get a really crisp, high quality image without a lot of noise. We're gonna try and do this in one night to showcase everything that I've learned, the equipment that I'm using, we're gonna frame it up, we're gonna edit it, and we're gonna see what we can get in one night. Hope you all enjoy this and let's get into it. For our telescope, we are using a Skywatcher 100ED Super APO Triplet Refractor with a Starlight Express SX694 CCD imaging camera with a filter wheel attached to the back of the telescope. The equatorial mount that we're using is the Skywatcher EQ6R Pro. Attached to our mount is a Pole Master, which is a lifesaver for getting polar aligned. So we have got everything set up, we're polar aligned, and we're now inside of our house, remote connected to the laptop, which is outside, and I wanna start framing up the Elephant's Trunk Nebula. Now, I would really like to get like this, what looks like the, the water coming out of the trunk of the nebula in the frame. So I think if we go, I kinda want the water to fall off the frame a little bit, so we're gonna try and get it centered, maybe like right on the star, right there. I think that's gonna look really, really great. Now we need to make sure that our telescope is unparked because what we wanna do now is actually command our telescope to actually go right to this location. And then we're gonna do something called plate solving to make sure that our telescope is actually pointed in that direction. So we've hit the command to actually slew the telescope over. And what's really nice is being able to do this all from inside. You can see all these numbers here changing and there we go. Uh, so our telescope now thinks we're looking right at that elephant trunk nebula. Uh, so we need to go into another program, which I like to use astrophotography tool for my plate solving. I've learned both astrophotography tool and Nina. Um, but I like to use astrophotography tool for my plate solving and then I'll use Nina specifically for um, For the imaging because I really like the imaging and sequencing inside of Nina I know using two programs is a little weird, but it's been working really really well for me So we're gonna go to point craft here and we're just gonna do an auto plate solve and kind of get this centered perfectly so we can start taking our images So we've done our basic plate solving. Now what we can do is we can go back into point craft, we can sync, and then we can show. And we can see here that our telescope is actually pointed way over here. Um, so what we wanna do is we wanna go back into Stellarium and then we're gonna hit control one again. And since it's synced up, what it's gonna do is it's gonna slew over to here again. And we're gonna keep running this plate solve until we know that we are exactly where we uh, want to be pointed in the sky. So I just did a little bit of a test image, only about 200 seconds in H alpha, and you can start to see the outline of the elephant's trunk nebula. You can see that we got the water going down through here, um, and it's looking pretty good so far. I think we've got it framed up to where I want it to be to actually start taking photos. I might want to actually center it 
So I might want to come this way a little bit. I don't want to get too greedy. I think I'm happy with the framing for this. Obviously, we need to flip it around. But we should be good to actually set up our sequence here. I should probably maybe try and get things a little bit more in focus. Actually, it looks like the stars are, are relatively good. It's definitely not the worst focus I've ever had. So it's the next morning now. And we got about five six hours worth of exposures and i've got them all stacked already so we've stacked all the h alpha into one image here uh, we've got all of our s2 which is the sulfur 2 data stacked here and then our uh, oxygen 3 data is not open anymore apparently uh, but i've done a little bit of processing already on these images um, i've basically just done a little bit of deconvolution which reduces some of the the ringing around the stars and brings out some detail in the nebulosity and i'm just kind of working on all the pre-processing and linear editing uh, but i've also started actually working on what we're going to be using to edit uh, the color grade as well as the nebulosity which means we remove the stars and i've for some reason having issues um, with the actual program that removes the stars and it's not doing as good of a job as it normally does so i'm having to go in and manually kind of adjust uh some of these areas where the stars were moved and left like this white splotch uh, and the reason that we remove the stars to edit the nebulosity of these photos is so that when i try and bring out the finer details in some of the and some of the stuff and and color grade it and whatnot uh, i don't want to over edit the stars i don't want to like over sharpen them uh, so it's just better to remove them completely and then you can only have to worry about editing the nebulosity of the elephant's trunk nebula so i'm kind of just going through here and fixing the issues that happened when i removed the stars and i'm probably gonna have to do this on all the photos so i can't figure out why it's not doing a good job of removing it itself uh and then we can actually make this into a color photo well, here we have our first RGB version of it, and you can see that it's heavily green. And that's because the H alpha channel is very, very strong. It's the most abundant element in the universe, and that's what we're going to be photoing the most of. So it makes everything look super green when you stack it in an RGB image. But there's a really cool trick that we can use to kind of get this the way we want it to. So we're going to go back into this program here, and I need to actually open up this one RGB file. And what we're going to do, you can see also all these little dots. These are all where the star is removed. There are so many stars in this photo, the star removal process wasn't that great. Um, I prob In retrospect, I probably should have just not removed the stars. Um, the photo, I'm probably going to end up doing two versions of it. But what we want to use this is this SCNR right here. And this SCNR is going to remove that green bias. And it's going to look really, really washed out right now. But this is where the really, where there's a pretty cool trick that we can do. We're going to save this as RGB2. And then we have a ton of editing to do. What we're going to use is we're going to actually use both of these RGB photos. And we got to bring back the stars and everything. So I'm going to work on editing this and actually make it look good. Okay. This is easily one of the hardest edits that I've ever done so far. I mean, technically this is my second photo, so obviously it would be a difficult edit. Um, the, the photos I took weren't as high quality as I was hoping for. I kind of, I photographed on a decent night, but there with the transparency in the sky wasn't as good as it should be to photograph a nebula like this. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and show you what it looks like edited. I turned off all of my adjustments. I did a lot of iterations of this to try and get it how I wanted. Um, but let's go ahead and go through there. So we added the blue here and then kind of transitions like this. And as we go up the tree, we're just starting to pull out more detail, more color. And just slowly but surely getting the style of photo that we want while also edi editing out uh, what shouldn't actually be there until we get to this point. It's not the best. It's definitely still noisy. Um, I probably am going to go back later and 
probably re-edit or not re-edit but take more photos of this particular nebula but I've been having a lot of fun going through and just photographing different things in the sky and learning as much as I possibly can about editing and and the process and all of this and I'm just kind of going through and taking out some of this red noise that is in the photo because of um i guess my my s2 layer is just not very good and we got this little band here i don't even know if that's supposed to be there it does show up but see when we when we add that layer it's just all grainy and it doesn't look really good so i definitely need to redo this at some point in time and get some better sulfur 2 data uh, but otherwise i really like the way it came out and i'm pretty happy with it so here's the elephant's trunk nebula. I'm happy with how it came out despite the low amount of exposure time that we have. We only ended up with about two and a half hours worth of exposure that was usable. Uh, I said earlier that we had about six, but that's how long I was actually photoing. Uh, we had clouds roll in where we were targeted the elephant nebula in the sky and we had to photograph some other things. Uh, but all in all, it came out pretty good and the nice thing about this is that I can continue to stack more data over time so every time I photograph the elephant's trunk nebula I can make it look better and better each time. Now we also have been working on something called the Pac-Man nebula. Now this one I'm going for a substantially higher quality photo. This is a total of 14 hours worth of data. We've got HA and O3 so right now we've got it stacked um, in a way to kind of give us this nice gold hue, but we still need to get our sulfur three data, which is going to give us those nice blue golds and greens when we stack it all together. And this one is going to be substantially higher quality. You can see that the, the grain is a lot better. We haven't even processed this a lot. It's going to look really good when we're done, but I do hope you all enjoyed today's video. I'll see you all in the next one.